I have been working with OpenAI's models powering ChatGPT like GPT-3 and GPT-4 to build my own AI assistants and they work extremely well, even for very complex tasks. McDonald's and other large companies are spending hundreds of millions to build AI assistants for their restaurants. Today I wanted to find out how well ChatGPT, specifically GPT-4, would handle taking orders from customers in a McDonald's drive through can it handle even the toughest orders or will it fail miserably? For this build, I'm using my AI Assistant Starter Kit to speed things up. This is a React Next.js boilerplate app I have been developing for a while. The Starter Kit is available on Gumroad if you're interested, but you can follow along if you're building yours from scratch. Let's get started. Okay, so if you're starting this project with me from my AI Assistant Starter Kit, I wanted to give you a quick overview of how things work and how you can run the application. So as you can see, we have the API server and the client application within the same project folder. This is called a monorepo and is powered by Turbo Repo. What this allows us to do is just run npm install and install all the dependencies together. And we can also just run npm run dev and both of the applications will start at the same time. So the API server is now starting up and the client application is also starting. You can go to the browser, navigate to localhost 3000 and the chat is up and running. Now testing it gives us an error message of request failed with status code 401 and this is happening because OpenAI APIs require you to pass in your key. You can get this key after registering and following the sample you just create a new .env file, add in your key, copy it over from your account and then you can just restart the application. And now all of your requests will now uh, will be sent with the OpenAI key. So let's try this again. Let's send hello, and we get the message back from GPT 3.5. Let's take a quick look at the interface. As you can see, we have a React.js application, and most of these components are coming from a free React component library called chat scope and this gives you a set of gives you a set of react components that makes it very easy to develop uh, chat UIs so I basically just took a few of these put everything together and I was done in less than 15 minutes let's take a look at the react component so if you go to the client application this is where our React application is. This is the entry point, page.tsx, and we have a single component called chat, and this is responsible for rendering the entire chat interface. Going to what this chat component returns, we can see all of the containers, the message lists, the message inputs put together, and these are all imported from chat scope. The most important method here is the handle send callback. So when you click the send button or hit enter, we take the value from the input field and using this handle send method, we send it back to the server. We have loading states and we also save the conversation. Uh, the second important callback is handle GPT response. This is the callback to process the new message back from the server. So essentially our React component is responsible for displaying the chat user interface, sending the messages to the server, and, and receiving and displaying the message back from the server, and also maintaining a conversation history. So there's not much to do on the client side. The chat is working well and it's looking good. All I wanted to do is just change it to look a bit more uh, on brand with McDonald's. So maybe we can change the background from the blue to add in an image. I already downloaded an image and it's in 
the public folder so this is where you can add your own images if you want to I just have this free stock image so let's add in the URL and take a look okay so clearly the image is quite big so what we need to do is size it down we can use the background size property with the cover value and this will make sure that the image is covering the entire background next thing to do is move the chat box right a little bit just so we get a bit more of the image and finally we can customize the avatar image if we go to the chat react component you can see that the message container has an avatar with a source and this is only for the assistant so we're just changing the openai svg to logo.png which is just another image i found on the internet all right so that's basically the user interface done we really don't have to do anything else because the majority of the work will be done in the server which is responsible for all of the messaging so going to the api server application you can see that we have a socket gateway this is because the application is communicating via web sockets so all of our messages from the client side will land here we can see that in the payload we have the messages which is our entire conversation history and we're passing it in to the intent service and the generate response function along with optional settings and we once we get the response back we're just sending it back to the client so again you can see that pretty much all of the logic is inside the generate response function so to develop your own ai assistant this is your this is where you will do most of the work and this is where we will customize everything so generate response method is getting the messages from the client and the first thing we do is we create the mess uh, the system message so if you're familiar with the OpenAI API for GPT 3.5 and 4 you know that you can pass in a system message which is not displayed in the conversation it's a set of instructions for the assistant to use uh, to answer all of your questions this can be personality or context or in this case i already i added uh, date and time so any messages later on will be able to answer based on these so once we have the messages with the system definition we can send it to uh, the open AI service and the chat endpoint and we are sending it with a set of functions and this is the most important part of our AI assistant because it can have a personality well defined but what the function definitions allow us to do is the assistant to trigger certain application logic and in our case this will be the actual act of ordering food items because it's easy to make the assistant behave uh, and respond like a McDonald's employee but the key thing here is to actually trigger orders with the correct values so the functions will be defined here this is a predefined schema that we need to follow very strictly a, in my starter kit application, I just have a very simple example of getting the current weather. What you have to uh, define here is the name of the function with a description of when you want this to be triggered by the assistant and also some parameters, for example, in this case is the location. So as you have your conversation with the assistant at certain points, when the assistant detects uh, that the user wants to know more about the uh, weather of a location then it would instead of sending back a message it sends you back a function trigger with the location 
In normal case, when you have a conversation with the assistant, all we do is we get the message back from the API and we send it back to the client. But if the assistant thinks that the user wants to call a function and we need to handle that, then we go into this condition. Uh, and you can see from the response we can extract the function name, the arguments, uh, and in this case the location itself. The actual response here, the function result, is hard-coded. As you can see, we're not actually getting the weather data. All we are sending back is a hard-coded string. We're saying current weather in XYZ location is fair. But in your case, if you want to actually build this out and you want to fetch real-time weather data, this is where you could do it. Okay, let's start with the assistant's personality. Currently in this example, the personality is simply you are Tim, a virtual assistant, you are witty and casual, you help the user with any requests. This is obviously something very simple, but this is what we could customize to make the assistant behave and speak like a McDonald's employee. So I thought what I could do is find the official McDonald's new employee manual. And this outlines everything a new employee would need to know. Uh, there are obviously some requirements around uniforms and personal appearance, which is, which is not relevant, but still interesting to see. But what we could definitely use is the drive-through responsibilities, because this is exactly what we want to follow we have rules like greet the customer, take the order, etc. And these are specifically the, the situations where we want our assistant to, to work. So based on this manual, this is what I came up with. You are James, a McDonald's drive through employee. You take customer orders. When taking an order, you should one, greet the customer. Example, welcome to McDonald's, may I take your order? Two, take the order, asking every once in a while anything else, or will that be all? Three, when the customer is finished ordering, verify their order is correct. This is especially important if they added specifications to their order. Four, tell the customer that total and say thank you. Treat all customers and fellow employees with respect and always show a warm, outgoing manner. Always check the time and only allow ordering breakfast items before 11 a.m. Always double check if the customer wants medium or large menu and what side and drink they want before placing an order. Be sure that short and succinct and efficient. This is a drive through You have to be fast. Only list options if the customer asks you to list them. Otherwise, assume the customer knows the options. So that's all. I think this will give us a very good general personality. Let's also add a few restaurant details. Okay, so just basically added the location and address and say that we are open every day from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and we stop serving breakfast after 11 a.m. Let's add this to the system message. starting with the restaurant details and we already have the assist assistant personality we just had to update it so let's see all right welcome to mcdonald's may i take your order exactly how we wanted it to speak all right so that's working well now what we need to do is add in the menu details, which is quite important, because every order is based on the menu. So this took me a while, but what I have here essentially is the burger prices, the fizzy drink prices, and all the other drink prices separately. The reason why I separated them is because in some cases, for example, with the drinks, there are different sizes. Hot drinks have regular and large. Fizzy drinks have so small, medium, large. Uh, so it just made sense to separate them. 
the reason uh, why I added the format defined in the first line is so I can be short uh, with the actual definition of the menu because explicitly listing all the options like large, medium, etc. that would take too much uh, tokens and obviously when you work with OpenAI you have to be aware of the number of tokens that you send. So this was essentially just the shortest way I could define a menu. So once this is done, we have to add this in to the system message. Okay, so now we have the menu items, the personality and the restaurant details all in the system message. So anything we ask, the assistant will be able to answer based on those. So let's ask how much is a Big Mac? The Big Mac is 539 for the burger only. And it also knows the medium and large menu prices, which is great. Okay, let's now focus on the functions because this is the most important part. We need to define these functions so that the assistant knows exactly when and how to order a piece of food item. So how does it work? So OpenAI allows you to send in a set of functions with a name, description and parameters. And based on the description, it would decide when this will need to be triggered. And when it thinks so, then instead of sending a message back, it sends back uh, a message with a role function indicating to you that we need to trigger a, a certain piece of code in our application. Okay, so I got rid of the constant, but I'm going to paste in the order for a single item. So let's see. The name of the function is order single item and the description says add or remove single food items from the order. So as soon as the assistant detects that a single item is ready to be ordered, this function will be triggered and we will, we will get the response back with all the information needed. So because we have order as a required, every time this function is triggered, we will get the order back that's required. And each order have a list of items. And again, we can define what is required and what is not. In this case, each order will need to come back with an item and an amount that's required. Customization is optional. So the item itself that we need is the name of the food item. So each order will need a name, whether it's Big Mac or Mayo Chicken. Next, we need an amount. That's also required. And this is a number, the number of food items. And if we want to take away something from the order, the number will be negative. If it's a positive number, we are adding something to the order. And the customization is just a text string custom request for the order. All right, so let's update the constant value here. We replaced it with a hard-coded string for the function name is all the single item and that's what we will use in the condition where we are handling the function call. So if the assistant responds back with a function call and the name is all the single item then we will do something. In this case let's get rid of all the references to this location because we don't need it. So what we need to do is send back a function result for GPT-4 to process. So every time we execute something in the code after a function call, we need to send back the result for the assistant to process. So in this case, we're just saying that we added it to the order, whatever we got back in the arguments. This will, the past arguments will be the details of the order. And we're sending back this function result to the assistant saying that the function call was successful and the order was successful. And then 
Based on that, the assistant will come back with an actual message. Okay, so let's see how this works. So down here in the console you will see if any function calls are happening. Okay, so let's see how this works. Okay, let's try and order a Big Mac. Sure, would you like that in a medium or a large menu? So, because we added this to the personality and the system message, it already knows that you can order a large or a medium menu, but we only have a function call for a single item, so it went ahead and ordered a single Big Mac. You can see here that's, it, that's the data that we got back from the function call. Order item Big Mac amount 1 customization. Let's try something else. Can I have a Big Mac burger with no ketchup? Let's see if it populates the customization field. Okay, and we can see that order item Big Mac amount one customization no ketchup. So perfect. It works as expected. Okay, now that we can order a single item, let's add the function definition for ordering a menu. Okay, so it follows a similar structure with a few additional fields. The description now is add or remove complete menus from the order. If change is required, remove the menu first and then add the new order. Similarly, every order needs an item, the name of the menu item. But this time we now have individual names for the medium and large items. The amount is the same number of menus we want. Customization is the same. Uh, but we also need to pass in the menu side option and the menu drink option. So this contains all the options for what you can choose as a side dish and all the options you can choose as a drink. Okay, let's save this and test it out. Can I have a chicken burger? Sure, which chicken burger? Let's have the bacon mayo. Okay, so it went ahead and ordered the bacon mayo chicken. Which is fine, because we haven't actually said that we want a menu. But it would have been nice if it offered, because I think in the personality we mentioned that we want the menus to be upsold. So I think we probably reached the limits of what we can do with GPT 3.5 and it's great that we have 3.5 because it's fast and cheap but I think at this point we should start using GPT 4 because it's, uh, it's just better overall. There are a few places where we can change the model. You can actually pass it in from the client but Let's just add it here at the actual function definitions as an overwrite. Okay, let's try and do the same thing again. And let's see if we are now offered the many options. We're working with GPT-4 now. Can I have a chicken burger? Sure, we have a few chicken burgers. Okay, that's good. Can I have the Mac Crispy? Of course, would you like the Mac Crispy as a single burger or would you like it as a medium or large menu? Yeah, that's perfect. So we want it as a medium menu with a fruit bag. Okay, good. We still not ready to order. We need to specify the drink. And finally, we run into an error. But this is nothing to do with the actual logic. We forgot to specify the function name in our condition and we are actually not sending any function result back. That was the problem. So we just need to make sure that if the function name, the function call is order menu, that we still send the function result back. Let's give it a second go. This time with a bacon burger. Okay, we have the Big Tasty and the Bacon Double Cheeseburger. 
Okay, let's specify no pickles just to test out the uh, slightly more complicated order. So it did, didn't offer the menu. Let's try and remove it, see if that works. Say we actually wanted this in a menu. Okay, so amount minus one, it removed a big tasty. Just have to specify the options for the menu, medium menu fries with Coke. Okay, we have an order. Item, big tasty with bacon, medium, one customization, no pickle with fries and a classic Coke. Exactly what we wanted. Perfect. So the final thing we need to now add is allow ordering individual drink items. And we need to, we need to uh, specify this separately because for the drinks we have different amounts uh, and different, different items. And if you try to define these in all in one function that would be too complicated. So it, it works a lot better if we have individual functions for each of them. So same format, we need a drink item to be specified, the amount, negative or a positive number, and the size attribute is where things get a bit more tricky. Hot beverages, you usually have regular or large, but for fizzy drinks, large means different, and you also have small, medium and large, so it's a bit more complicated, but that's why it needed to be defined separately. So now with all three of them defined, we are pretty much done. All right, let's have a coffee. It also knows that you can choose regular or large. So let's order a white coffee regular. All right, so I think we have the same error. We haven't defined we haven't added the function name in the condition. Let's do a final test. I will just have a tea. Okay, so it ordered a PG tips tea for us in regular. I think we were too casual and it assumed that we probably just want a regular. Let's see if it knows the price. One pound nine P which is the correct part price, by the way. Let's also order a Coke. All right, again, proactively added a medium, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted a large. I wanted a large one. It should now remove the medium and add in a large one. Let's see if it works. All right, I apologize for the confusion. All right, order Coke Classic amount minus one order coke classic amount one in large so I was able to add and remove okay let's see if we get, get a breakfast item it's definitely past 11 now so good it's not getting us any breakfast which is what we wanted so it knows the menu items knows the prices knows the current time it can order add to the order, remove from the order, order drinks separately in a menu, small and large. So that's pretty much it. And yes, obviously we are not actually ordering, but you could plug this application into an actual ordering system. And based on that object that we are getting back from the model, we can trigger certain orders and actually handle these. You probably noticed that 80% of the work was just defining everything in plain English, defining the personality in English, the menu items and the function calls are also rely on very well written descriptions and options. And that's it really. Thanks for watching.